Hey everybody, Ash here with Chin Sense. Today I'm coming at you with a, uh, a little bit of a different kind of video. So, FragranceNet reached out to me probably four months ago at this point. It's, it's been a while. And uh, they said, hey, how about we do a collaboration video? We'll give you a $75 gift certificate and you get whatever you want from FragranceNet. So, free reign and uh, just make a video on it. And I figured, yeah, that sounds interesting enough. Now, what I did is something a little bit different. Uh, I didn't go in and try to get a couple of newer fragrances or even one fragrance that was right at 75 bucks. I just tried to get some interesting fragrances that were on the cheaper side. So I actually got four. And I'm gonna go over each one of those fragrances, let you know kind of why I decided to pick those in my $75 shopping spree, whatever you wanna call it and uh, give you a breakdown on the fragrance, let you know if it's something worth checking out. And there are some interesting ones here. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the fragrances right now, and then I'll break down each one individually. So first one is uh, Roberto Cavalli Uomo. So this is the first fragrance that I picked out. Um, I was kind of intrigued by the bottle design here. I really haven't heard very much spoken about this one, so I was interested to check that one out. This is one of the newer releases of the ones that I got, and it's also kind of a, a mainstream designer fragrance, but not really because it doesn't really get much hype. So that's why I picked that one. Also got Jacques Bogart, One Man Show. So this is an old school throwback fragrance from the 80s. Uh, if you've watched my channel for a long time, you know that I like those 80s fragrances. This is one I did not own, but it's cheap. And you know, it's been talked about a lot by different people online or other YouTubers. So I figured I'd check that one out. Also got this one, Pinot Silvestri or Pinot Silvestri, uh, whatever. So this one, in case you're unaware, is uh, the number one Facebook, maybe YouTube, fragrance troll of all time, Serapio Silva. He always talks about this fragrance, it's his favorite. Now when I say troll, I've said this before in the past, but he's really not like a bad guy. Like when he makes posts and stuff, he's not, you know, one of those dudes that's trying to uh, come across aggressive or mean-spirited. If you've been on Facebook groups, Facebook fragrance groups, you know what I'm talking about. Serapio Silva is basically the entire reason I got this one. <laughs> so, uh, shout outs. Serapio Silva. And then uh, the last one here is Masoni Parfum. So this one is uh, a fragrance that is very similar to a popular designer men's fragrance. Uh, a really compliment getting, people pleasing, versatile men's fragrance is similar to that one or that one is similar to the fragrance I'm alluding to. We'll get to that in a little bit. But that's really why I wanted to check that one out, uh, the Missoni. I wanted to see if it was a good, maybe alternative to that fragrance that we're gonna talk about in a second. See what the quality was like on this one. Uh, because this one you can actually get for a, a much cheaper price than the other one. So let's go ahead and jump into this and uh, check these out individually. So we'll go in the same order as uh, when we just did the quick rundown. First off, we'll talk about this one, Roberto Cavalli Uomo. Uh, this is the first in this line. There are actually three fragrances in the Cavalli Uomo line at this point, but this is the OG. And if you look on Fragrantica, some people will say that this actually smells similar to those other two fragrances in this line. Uh, so I don't know if there's a huge amount of variation between this one and the two that came after it, but since I haven't smelled those, I'm just gonna talk about this one. So some of the main notes here include uh, violet, honey, tonka, saffron, lavender cedar, and I believe patchouli. And uh, the main thing that you're gonna get from this one is going to be that violet, honey, and tonka. I get really solid performance from this one. Uh, seven plus hours, the times that I've worn it. So that for me is definitely above average. Uh, it's a good projector. It's not something that's going to necessarily uh, fill up a room but I have nothing to complain about in terms of performance, above average longevity, and slightly above average uh, projection. So this is a masculine fragrance, uh, but be aware going in that there are floral notes here, and those are some of the most prominent notes in the fragrance. It has violet as well as lavender, as two of the most uh, prominent notes that you're going to pick up. So those do give it kind of a powdery floral feel in the foreground 
of this fragrance. So if you don't like that, if you don't like florals in your fragrances, if you don't like powder in your fragrances, uh, then this is probably not gonna be for you. One of the best things about this fragrance to my nose though, is it has a really nice honeyed kind of feeling as it heads from the mid into the dry down. And that's gonna be again, the honey note that's in the fragrance, as well as tonka. And that sweetens things up, uh, makes it a little more sensual, a little more appealing, and to me is the best part of the fragrance. That honey and tonka mixing together gives this one a little bit of a, a vanillic kind of gourmandish vibe from the mid into the dry down. Uh, smells really, really nice as well. You get a, a small kick of spice from saffron here. And in the base, there's a little bit of cedar, more isoe super, whatever you want to call it, basically the same thing. That lends a little bit of a, a familiar, a fuzzy backbone to the base. All that being said though, the cedar, the isoe super, that's not really what you're gonna remember from this one. You're gonna remember more the violet, the lavender, those powdery florals, and that sweet honey tonka. Those are the two main things that really stick with me when I smell this one, and I think it's gonna be the same for you. As far as quality goes for the price, this one is really, really nice. Quality here is quite high, and this is an inexpensive fragrance. This is definitely what I would consider a cheapie. And uh, when you kind of factor everything in together, uh, the fragrance, which is actually quite unique as far as designers go. Uh, the quality of the blend of the fragrance, uh, just overall how nice it smells. And then the package itself, which is good quality here. It does look nice. It's a nice thick glass. The cap on this one is not magnetic, but it looks quality. Similar a little bit to like your Blue de Chanel type designs, you know, just very simple square shape but a classy look. All those put together for the price. I think this one's a real winner. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys the price uh, that these were running when I actually ordered them from FragranceNet. And this was with a 30% off coupon. So this was not your 35, 33, or 37% coupon that you've probably seen from FragranceNet. This was at 30%. Cavalli Womo, uh, this is a two ounce bottle. Got it for a 24.49. So again, in my opinion, that one is a home run, that's a winner. Up next, let's talk about this one. One Man Show. Again, this is throwback. This is old school. This is 80s. And like lots of other 80s fragrances out there, this has a ton of notes in it. Uh, that was something that was super common in the 80s. If you look up a lot of the classic fragrances from back then, like Dracar Noir, which is, that's nice. They just had a ton of notes and this one like those, ton of notes. Some of the main ones that you'll get are pine needles, oak moss, and leather. Those again are, are common notes in a lot of popular 80s fragrances, especially your oak moss. Uh, Polo Green, the original Polo Green, really well known well, with its pine note. So this one does share some similarities to those uh, old school fragrances, which makes sense because this is an old school fragrance. So this was originally released in 1980. So I'm gonna go ahead and date myself. That was five years before I was born. It has that old school masculine vibe to it. When you smell it, you'll right away know like, that's from the 80s. It's got a green herbal blast in the opening and then it's got uh, further green notes from those pine needles. Off the top, this one uh, can be a little bit overwhelming for some people. Personally, I think it smells fine. I think it smells really nice. Is it something that I would wear on a day to day? Probably not, if I'm being honest, but I really do respect it. Now, initially it has those notes that I just talked about as well as a blend of spices and florals that gives it kind of a, an old school masculine soap vibe. And then as the fragrance goes along, it evolves to include leather and even some animalic notes in there. Uh, kind of dirties things up a little bit, but at the same time, it does retain that cleanness, that um, throwback masculine soap again, uh, vibe from the opening. So at the same time, it's uh, soapy, uh, but a little bit musky. It's floral, uh, but at the same time, definitely macho. And I can use macho to describe this again because of the time frame it came out in. This is gonna be for your old school lovers, powerhouse lovers, uh, your guys out there that really want a fragrance that's gonna project and is gonna give off a little bit of that that throwback vibe of masculinity that these 80s fragrances had in spades. This fragrance projects strongly, no issues there, eight plus hours of longevity easily, and uh, that's being kind of on the low side when I say eight plus hours. This one can really stretch you know, for an entire day. You could put this on at 6 a.m. and it's still gonna be there when you go to bed at night uh, if you give yourself a few sprays of that in the morning. 
So if you like those old school fragrances, again, Polo Green, uh, Quorum, the original Versace Loam, fragrances like that, then this is gonna be right up your alley. If you like those three, then I would be very surprised if you disliked this one. It's super cheap. At this point, it's kind of a retro fragrance. I mean, spray that on and watch Stranger Things season three. You know, it's gonna fit right in. Now, this one I paid $13.99. So that was the price uh, that this one had with the 30% off code. This is a 100 ml size bottle. Next up, it's the fragrance I know that all of you have been waiting on. It's the Pinot. This is, uh, again, the Serapio Silva Special. And I do have to say, at this point, I have four bottles from, uh, from this house. One thing <laughs> that is uh, a little bit annoying is the atomizers here. I'll give you a close-up. Hopefully, you'll be able to see this while I talk about it. Let's see. Okay, so this is the atomizer, obviously. You press down on this and it sprays out. If you can see the nozzle there, it's not really lined up with the middle of the opening here. So what happens with this one and the other ones that I have is when you spray this, you give yourself three, four sprays, some of the mist will actually hit on the inside of the opening here and then it kind of drizzles down the front. So uh, not really the, the highest quality of uh, craftsmanship going into these bottles, but it's okay. This one I got as a tester. This is a 75 mil size. This was running $7.69, so super cheap. And this one goes back even further than One Man Show. This was released 1980. This was released 1955. So we are taking it way, way back on this one. This one opens up very medicinally. When you first spray it on, it has a very big herbaceous blast that's gonna turn off a lot of people. And it's got thyme, it has juniper, it has basil, and it's got a lot of it. There is also a prominent pine note here, uh, which is something shared with the previous fragrance, and that should not really come as much of a surprise. I mean, look at the bottle, it's shaped like a pine cone. One thing though, at least to my nose, the pine note here is not as prominent as those herbal notes, especially in the opening. So while this is named Pinot Silvestri, while it does look like a pine cone, and pine does play a big part of the fragrance, uh, it's not as strong as you might think. To me, it almost smells like you took a, a big handful of those previously mentioned herbs and uh, rubbed them like into the bark of a pine tree. Like you just took a big handful and just rubbed and rubbed and rubbed until the, uh, the herbs were kind of becoming fragrant and then took a whiff of that. That's a little bit like what this smells like. As this fragrance dries down, lemon starts to come out a little bit, uh, which might be kind of surprising because lemon is usually a uh, top note, usually one of the first things that you smell. But as this dries down, lemon does come out and uh, you can pick it up a little bit. Uh, the herbs tone down and then there's a cedar note that comes in and provides more of a woody backbone in the base. To be straightforward with you, uh, this is a cheap fragrance. I mean, I've already told you the price. This does not smell like, a, you know, a super expensive fragrance. It does not smell natural. That should not be a surprise to you. In the opening, uh, it does smell a little bit like a synthetic mess, and that's just those, all those herbal notes. They don't work that well together in the opening. But truthfully, when it dries down, those herbal notes tone down a little bit. It actually smells pretty nice, especially considering the price. It's just a simple green, woody fragrance uh, with bits of spice. It's it's okay. I mean, what do you want? It's under $10. And some people say that it smells similar to Christmas or that it reminds them of Christmas. Now, it doesn't smell like Christmas to me. There are other fragrances I own that remind me more of Christmas time, but I get the sentiment. You know, it, it's got that, uh, that pine undercurrent along with uh, some herbs and spices that all put together could potentially remind you of Christmas, I guess. So there we go, Pinot Silvestre. And uh, again, shout outs to Serapio. Everybody pay your respects to the number one Facebook troll in the comments section, Serapio Silva. All right guys, up last, Missoni Parfum Pour Homme. Now this is a tester, I did not get the full presentation. It is a 100 ml size. The full presentation does come with the magnetic cap, looks pretty nice. So be aware if you're you're gonna buy this and that's important to you, you know, go for the full presentation, but I don't really care all that much. The fragrance is what's most important to me. 
so I went with the tester. Also, I needed to go with the tester to make sure everything fit under budget. This one was a $27.99, 100 mil size, again, tester, and that's with the 30% off code. Now, I alluded to this smelling like a really popular designer fragrance at the beginning of the video. That fragrance is Bleu de Chanel Eau de Toilette. This has the grapefruit, ginger, and lemon opening that Bleu de Chanel Eau de Toilette has. This is missing some of the notes from uh, Bleu de Chanel. It does not have mint, it does not have pink pepper, it does not have incense, but it, this is very similar in the opening. It's actually really nice smelling too. Surprisingly, the Missoni is a very high quality mm, take on Bleu de Chanel in the opening. It's fresh, it's singy, it's very appealing, it's uh, it's very nice smelling in the opening. Now, if you think that Blue de Chanel smells generic, if you think Dior Sauvage smells generic, Versace, Dylan Blue, Aqua Atlantique, all of those blue fragrances, if you think that those smell generic, if that's not for you, this most likely not gonna be for you either. If you like that type of fragrance, if you think that type of fragrance is great, if you really appreciate the compliment getting potential, the versatility, uh, all of that, then you will probably really enjoy this fragrance. So it just depends on which side of the fence you fall as to how you're going to view this one. Now, this one of these four, again, is gonna be the one that's gonna be the most compliment getting in my opinion. It's gonna be between these two, but this one most likely is going to win out just because it does have that kind of Blue de Chanel type vibe. I did get a compliment wearing this one from one of my wife's friends. She was about 15 feet away and I had sprayed this on maybe 20 minutes beforehand and gone outside, we were having a get together here and the wind was kind of whipping around and uh, she could pick up the smell of this as soon as I stepped outside. Again, it was aided by the wind. She was like 15 feet away, normal circumstances. She wouldn't smell that at all, but uh, she said it smelled great. She said, whatever you have on smells awesome. You know, what are you gonna do? It's like Blue de Chanel, Versace Dylan Blue. Again, all those type fragrances, we all know what they're made for. You know, mass appeal, versatility, compliment factor. So this does have that. Uh, as this dries down, it does differentiate itself from Blue de Chanel. Again, uh, they're the closest in the opening and starting into the mid, but once you hit the mid into the dry down, this does kind of take a different path than Blue de Chanel. There's lavender, apple, and birch in here. And again, it's missing that incense note that Blue de Chanel is really well known for. So into the dry down, Missoni does end up smelling kind of like a, a clean shower gel kind of fragrance. It does remind me of that. So again, reiterating, if you think that kind of fragrance sucks, you're not gonna like it. If you think that kind of fragrance is great, you're probably gonna love it. And the best thing about that is the price. The price here, again, for this one, $27.99, I have it written down right here. <laughs> so yeah, $27.99, 100 mil tester. You're never going to get Blue de Chanel for that price, ever. And while this is not the same as Blue de Chanel, the opening into the mid is quite similar. You're gonna get a, a definite uh, similar feeling there. And it does differentiate into the dry down, but if you put this in a blue bottle, it would fit in perfectly with all those fragrances I mentioned before, absolutely. And quality wise, this blows away other fragrances that are inspired by Blue de Chanel. You know, Tag Helm by Armoff. This destroys Tag Helm. Tag Helm is trash compared to this. Uh, this destroys Perry Ellis Eau de Toilette. So if you're looking for a cheap alternative to Blue de Chanel, uh, that's gonna give you a similar feeling. Again, not an exact clone, but a similar feeling. Check this one out for sure. Performance for me, moderate, five to six hours, and a projection average. Nothing here is beast mode on the Missoni. I did read online, some people said that they get awesome performance at last forever, projects insane. I don't get that with this, uh, but I don't have any complaints either. So, kind of just right in the middle. All right, guys, that's gonna do it. I talked for a really long time. This actually went way longer than I was expecting. I apologize for that. I almost did like a full review on each one of these. Let me know in the comments what you would buy with the $75 fragrance net shopping spree. And they did not agree to it, but I'm going to see if I can get fragrance net to possibly sponsor some sort of like shopping spree thing like I did here for one of you guys out there. So um, I'm gonna reach out to them and see if I can make that happen. And if they won't make that happen, I'll do it as a, a giveaway at 50,000 subscribers. I'll do like a shopping spree for one of you guys out there. So hopefully they do it. But if they don't, I got you guys covered. 
So <laughs> I'll be on the lookout for that. If they agree to it, I'll put it in the description if they agree to it before I put this out. If they don't, I'll make another video, like a short one in the future and, and let one of you guys get hooked up. But let me know in the comments what you dudes would buy for you know 75 bucks. What would you do? Would you do kind of something like this? Would you go for one fragrance, like a newer one? Or what, what are you thinking? As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys again next time. This ran a really long time. <laughs>